Hi guys, Jordan here. Um, I wanted to do something different. Um, so I've recently moved to Melbourne. Um, and in Melbourne, there are a lot of unsolved murders, uh, which are pretty interesting. And I guess Melbourne has quite an interesting history. And yeah, just wanted to look into some of them. So I was Googling, found some cool ones. So I'll give this a crack and see how it goes. Um, let me know if you've got any feedback. Um, or don't if you don't want to because I'm not your mum and I'm not going to tell you what to do. So I guess before I start I'd just like to say if this um, brings up some bad memories or affects you in any way perhaps reach out to a local help clinic or something. I don't know who listens to this or who will listen to this so just google I don't know, crisis or trauma or whatever you want to do. If you're in Australia, Lifeline or Blue Knot is pretty good. Um, so do that. But also, I'm not your mum and I'm not going to pretend to be. So, you know, do what you need to do to make sure that you're okay. Also, some of this will refer to a some legal process and I may have some quips uh, about them. But important to note that's not legal advice uh so don't think it is because that's just not so yep yeah, great anyways this particular unsolved mystery is called the gun alley murder uh it's quite a famous uh murder uh, in melbourne and it, it remains unsolved it's kind of like the biggest unsolved mystery in uh melbourne which is interesting it's 30 december 1921 also known as new year's eve's eve more commonly known as New Year's Eve's Eve, rather, uh, and there's obviously been a terrible murder. Inner city Melbourne in 1921 looked a bit like London, but just imagine that there were less people. It's obviously still 1921, um, but you had all the backstreet razor gangs and all that juicy stuff. We're just before the Great Depression. Uh, think kind of Peaky Blinders season two, but less people. Also, not Birmingham, but in Australia. So, yeah, I hope that, you know, jogs your memory if you can remember back to 1921, but also I don't blame you if you can't. 12 year old Alma Tershki, that's how I'm going to pronounce it. I'm not actually sure how it's pronounced, so uh, I do apologize. She's 12. Um, and also dead, unfortunately, uh, runs an errand. She used to go to her grandmother's house in Jollymont, which is in Melbourne, to the butcher on Swanston Street, which is in the city, collect some meat, drop it off at her aunt on Collins Street, which still exists, and then head back to Jollymont, which also still exists. Uh, she usually gets these this particular errand done fairly quickly, uh, or so I'm told, by various sources, I wasn't there, it's 1921. Unfortunately, on New Year's Eve's Eve, Alma never returns to her grandmother from this particular errand. The next day, Alma's body is found naked in an alley called Gun Alley Lane near a popular bar, the Australian Wine Bar. Yep. Really creative bar name. Thank you. So before I continue, I just want to draw some attention to the fact that this is called Gun Alley Lane. Uh, look, I'm not a road naming expert, nor do I profess to be a road naming expert, but surely if something is an alley, it therefore cannot also be a lane. That's like calling it Gun Street Road. Like, I don't know, doesn't make particular sense to me, but also neither does, you know, raping and murdering a 12 year old girl so maybe there are more important things to focus on but this really bugs me so i hope it bugs you as well anyways alma's dead and now it's actual new year's eve not new year's eve's eve so it's december 31st 1921 and her body is found it turns out she was last seen alive around 3 p.m near the australian wine saloon shortly after alma's body is discovered um, as you can imagine, uh, it becomes front page news. Uh, people are obviously outraged uh, and they want answers, which is, you know, fair enough, really. There's a dead 12-year-old who was 
found naked. So, yep, not great. So after these headlines, uh, police offer a £1,000 reward, which may not seem like that much money, but uh, it's 1921. Uh, it's a lot of money, and it's second only to the Kelly Gang uh, reward. So huge, huge case. Um, obviously, the Kellys, quite notorious. Uh, and then you got Alma, just a little bit below the Kellys in terms of notoriety. So yeah, very interesting. Um, like, you know, Ned Kelly, world famous. Uh, Alma, not so much, but in Australia at the time, absolutely. So detectives began their investigation by questioning the pub owner. His name was Colin Ross. Apparently he and the police were not best mates. Uh, Colin had been to jail before um, and yeah, not, not friends, if that, if that helps. Um, Colin revealed that he had seen Alma briefly that day, uh, but he had no idea about her or you know what she was doing, etc. So Colin Ross told police, police that he spent most of New Year's Eve's Eve's day and most of New Year's Eve's Eve uh, with a woman uh, who was able to provide him an alibi. So that's interesting. One day I'll stop saying New Year's Eve's Eve, but it's not today, so you'll just have to bear with me. And after this, other witnesses came forward, offering different perspectives on the matter, including uh, a different perspective from a former employee of the bar named Ivy Matthews. We'll hear more about her later. So Ivy Matthews said that she saw Alma at the bar and also that she reckoned Colin Ross told her that he admitted to the crime. Uh, today, this would be what we consider hearsay evidence. Um, so hearsay is when you say that someone else said something. Uh, this is generally not admissible in court because like, you know, for obvious reasons, it's literally he said, she said, except what that is supposed to mean is that he said that she said, not it's he said versus she said. Anyways, besides the point, um, you can't really, that's not admissible, but it's 1921 and, you know, things are different. So... I don't know, I'm not responsible for 1921, don't ask me. Uh, the police continue their investigation. Strands of hair are found in Colin Ross's home or at the bar. It's not clear. Uh, different sources say different things. Um, different sources also say that the hair was red or golden. Um, these are two different things. I don't know why, uh, especially considering that the hair was apparently still available in the early 2000s. No one's cleared this up. Regarding the home or the bar, uh, this doesn't make sense to me. So this is, this is just speculation on my part. This isn't from a source or anything, but if the hair was found at the home, so Alma's body was found outside the bar. Um, and if the hair was found at the home, why would, you know, that doesn't make sense unless he lived at the bar. Um, which also doesn't make sense because it was in the kind of like an arcade. The bar was an arcade. So why would Colin Ross take Alma to his house and then do whatever over there and then take her back to outside his place of work and then leave her body there? That doesn't make sense. Um, also, he doesn't, it's, it, yeah, so the bar is in an arcade. Um, so he wouldn't live in the bar, like a traditional bar on the side of the road kind of thing. Um, where you have like lodgings at the top, like a hotel, like a pub thing. Um, so I reckon the hair must have been in kind of like maybe a private room within the bar that they found, but this is not clear from any sources. So uh, it, it just doesn't make sense to me. But also this is uh, kind of the physical evidence that was relied on by the court at the time. Uh, it also must be said that the hair, the sample of hair, um, so there was a sample taken from Alma's head and there was a sample taken from hair of, of hair from whether it was Colin's home or uh, the bar. It was taken weeks after the event and then it was uh, stored not in but on someone's desk. So someone literally found some hair, put it on someone's desk for weeks um, and weeks after the event. So, you know, today this is probably not an appropriate handling of evidence um, to be used. Uh, 
and again this evidence would also probably be inadmissible uh, which means not admissible uh, for those playing at home um, so yeah just something to note I'm trying to hint at the court process is probably not super up to scratch at this point in time but you know it's 1921 based on the hair uh, the hair evidence so the two separate pieces of hair and evidence mainly from Ivy Matthews and then apparently three other witnesses um, uh, Colin Ross was charged with the rape and murder of Alma Tershke. The pursuant trial was incredibly public, um, so huge press, like almost unprecedented, uh, and this probably influenced the jury. Uh, again, 1921, different time, not like today. Colin Ross's lawyer famously said about this influence that it's not the evidence here I fear, it's the preconceived opinion. Uh, fair enough, really. The Midnight Sun in 1922 stated that the extraordinary publicity given to the charges made it impossible for any average collection of men to clear their mind of the convictions, one side or the other, because it's 1921 and, sorry, the 1920s, and women don't exist yet, I'm afraid. Anyways, a lot of publicity, uh, obviously influenced the jury, it's quite clear. Unsurprisingly, Colin Ross was found guilty of the murder and rape of Alma Tershke, and he was sentenced to hang because it's 1922. After this, the famous kind of story is that, uh, this is unconfirmed, that he would write letters, Colin in prison would write letters, uh, and just kind of chuck him out the prison window until someone came upon them, and then offered him advice and blah 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 blah. Anyways, Colin Ross, right till the end, uh, professed his innocence. Um, he eventually was represented by quite a famous lawyer, uh, or barrister rather, uh, who became uh, an Australian senator, uh, who was also equally convinced of his innocence. Colin Ross appealed to the highest court in Australia at the time, which wasn't in Australia, which is quite funny, so the highest court of, of Australia as a British colony was actually in Britain. Um, anyways, fun fact for you, um, that the, for those interested, it's the Privy Council, um, which we can't do anymore. If you go to the High Court and you want to appeal uh, further than the High Court, you either can't or unless it's on a human rights ground. Uh, so I think in the 70s, a Tasmanian man um, appealed further than the High Court, but it it's kind of a different process, so yeah. Interesting fact. After uh, Colin Ross was hanged, unfortunately, uh, it became known that all four witnesses, uh, so the key witnesses in the trial, uh, the prosecution's case rather, were not very reliable. So one witness was report reportedly previously in jail uh, with Colin, uh, and, and the other kind of major witness, Ivy Matthews, um, was a former employee of Colin Ross who was fired just weeks before the murder uh, and it said that she may have been motivated by the thousand pound reward which you know and they did in fact receive that reward so you know they may have been motivated yep I think that's fair enough anyways 70 years later some historian went and had a squiz uh, and found that the hairs in the case were still uh, on file. So I think this is in the 1990s or 1980s. Uh, no, 70 years plus 1921 is 1991 technology. So 1991, the historian uh, had a look at the hairs which were still on file and they, would you believe, they didn't match. Not the same hairs. So wowee. This is also when he uncovered that, you know, blah, 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 maybe not a reliable witness. Excellent. So in 2008, Colin Ross was posthumously, uh, after death, <laughs> I don't know how to say that word, pardoned. So 90 years after Colin's execution, um, he was pardoned and is the first Australian ever to, first and only, sorry, Australian ever to be posthumously pardoned. I don't know how to say that word. Ultimately, the person who killed Alma Tershke uh, escaped um, and an innocent man was imprisoned so that's great 
that's what we call a miscarriage of justice. Um, but yeah, there there have been some books published who profess to know the person uh, responsible for the murder, um, but I've not read them. So uh, if you want, give it a read. I'm not so sure it happened in 1921. So, you know, anyways. Thank you for listening. Uh, let me know if you enjoyed this. Uh, let me know if you didn't enjoy it. Um, and let me know if you want me to chat about anything else. Kind regards.